Universal Legendary Commander Sculptures are some of the most valuable items in Rise of Kingdoms, so it's important to get the most value out of those investments as you possibly can, and the order with which you invest in these Legendary Commanders could make a big difference in your end game PvP performance. So today, I'm going to be bringing you guys my updated Legendary Commander investment guide starting from the very beginning of the game all the way into Season of Conquest. This video is going to be targeted primarily at free to play players and low spenders because you guys are going to be the ones that want to avoid mistakes the most but first what's going on guys cheers now right out of the gate i want to give you guys a quick disclaimer of course in rise of kingdoms new legendary commanders come out every like two and a half to three months and if i were to guess i would say we're probably going to see a new set of cavalry commanders within the next month or so and i'm gonna try to incorporate that in this video of course there's no information about that yet but what I'm trying to say is that you should subscribe to the channel because you should stay updated on the latest information when it comes to rise of kingdoms about 68 percent of you guys are not subscribed so click that button and drop a thumbs up while you're down there and also today's video is sponsored by a website that I spend more money on than I'd like to admit to Amazon and the Amazon App Store the Amazon App Store is the best place to download and play your favorite games because of their own digital currency known as Amazon coins for example right now the Amazon App Store is running a massive promotion with Ebony the King's return. You can get up to 25% back on all in-game purchases in the form of Amazon coins, and you can then use these coins to redeem for more in-game purchases. But it doesn't end there because you can actually get a discount on buying Amazon coins as well. If you use my link down below, you can save between 5 and 10% on Amazon coins themselves. So for example, 50,000 Amazon coins is usually $500, but right now it's only 450. 10,000 coins is normally $100, but right now it's 92. So not only can you get an upfront discount on purchases you might normally already be making but then you get the cash back in the form of Amazon coins as well it's literally a win-win so I don't see any reason not to give it a try especially because downloading the Amazon App Store is free with a link down below or by scanning the QR code on the screen and of course using my link helps out the channel a ton and this offer is available to anybody using an Android device in the United States the UK so give the Amazon App Store and Ebony the King's Return a try today and I want to thank the Amazon App Store once again for sponsoring today's video with all that out of the way let me just start by saying that the best possible strategy for investing in legendary commanders is to save all of your sculptures until you reach kvk season three now that's the best strategy on paper but in practice it's not always going to work out that way because kvk3 starts between 245 and 270 days after your server first opens so I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys to just do nothing for seven months right that's not really fun this is a video game after all and so you should invest in commanders that you like the most and if that means picking up a couple of commanders along the way to kvk3 then so be it make those investments but why is that the best strategy right why does everyone recommend to save until kvk3 well if you look at the top of the screen here it says that this commander can only be used in kingdoms that have reached season three or later and past season three is called season of conquest and you might notice that there's a lot of commanders that I have fully expertise where if you're a brand new player you might not recognize any of these right we have Tara we have Nebu we have Gorgo like a lot of these commanders are things that you probably have no idea about if you just started the game today like Zhuye Liang like Huo right these are some of the best meta commanders in the game and you don't get access to them until season three and so if you're looking at where should you spend your universal legendary commander sculptures well I think the answer is pretty obvious you want to spend them on what the strongest commanders are and you only get access to the strongest commanders when you are deep into the late game because one commander sculpture that you spend in the early game on somebody like Richard is a sculpture that you can't spend on somebody in the late game like Liu Che and Liu Che is infinitely better than Richard in open field PVP in the late game so if you're a hardcore player or let's say you're restarting with a brand new account and you really want the best possible strategy save until kvk3 but with all that out of the way let's jump into the order with which I would recommend investing in legendary commanders in 2024 and the first place we're going to start like always is getting Richard the first to five one 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 that means maxing out this first skill and then simply unlocking the other three and the reason that we do this and the reason that this has always been my recommendation is because the healing factor on Richard is very unique it's very tanky he has a very strong damage debuff on his active skill and the rest of his skills just unlocking them gives you a nice little chunk of stats that you can use for PVE 
content okay so Richard is not going to be a PvP commander you're primarily unlocking him and getting that first skill to five for two reasons first of all you're going to use him for chaining barbarians especially in the early game with Ethelflaed as a secondary and you can also use him for things like Sunset Canyon he's very tanky in Sunset Canyon he's also very good for other events that come around like the Golden Kingdom he's probably going to help you during pre KVK for Marauders right so you're going to get a lot of value for the 50 sculptures that you use to spend on just the first skill here plus it's 10 sculptures to summon him you're going to get access to him on one of the first wheel of fortunes that come around in the game so make sure you save up a couple of gems at the beginning of the game so that way you can at least unlock him after Richard is on the wheel of fortune the next commander that you're going to see is E song Ye. and for the longest time this was always recommended to be the first commander that you should expertise and I no longer think that that is the case unfortunately the last time I made a video like this I still recommended players do that these days I do not recommend players invest in Yi song Ye, even at the beginning of the game there's only a few exceptions to this rule okay first of all if you've played rise of kingdoms before and you're just restarting and you're planning on going hard going crazy with chaining especially in the first few kvks then I still think you'll get some value out of Yi song Ye. you could probably pay off his cost in gems or speed ups resources whatever that you're going to get from chaining after a few kvks but that's only for players that know what they're doing and they're ready to go insane be mega active the other thing is you know again if you don't want to wait till kvk3 to invest in a commander i guess you could still go with e song yay although i do have a better recommendation that we're going to talk about in just a minute so stay tuned for that but if you have to invest in something in the early game just to feel like you're doing something then e song yay is probably the best early game kvk1 commander for sure still it's not probably that is definitely the case and also if you are a hardcore player who is going to be focusing on archers in the end game then you probably can still get use out of e song yay he's still very good Good in PvP, if you know what you're doing, he's very slow. There's not that much tankiness on him, even with his relic, right? He's he's okay. He does a ton of circular AoE damage, which is what he's always been known for. So if you're going to be an archer main, which I don't recommend free to play players go all in on archers. Okay. By the way, I made a guide for each individual troop type. Go ahead and check that out. I posted those a couple of months ago. I don't typically recommend free to play players go for archers, but if you are, then maybe you can consider E Song Ye. But I think for most players, probably. 90% of players watching this video, 95% of players, they probably should skip Yi Song Ye these days. Unfortunately, that does seem to be just the truth. He's very power correct, and you're just not going to get as much value out of him as you used to one or two years ago. Okay, so if that's the case, then who should you be fighting with in KBK1? And that's what I have this section for right here. And I'm glad you asked. This is a question that I get a lot, actually, because a lot of times I'll make guide videos talking about sort of the best meta commanders but they're all late game commanders and a lot of new players are watching and they're like Omniarch what do I do right what can I use well for kvk1 there is a commander pairing that I do think everyone should be using especially free to play and that would be Sun Tzu with Ethel Fled now is this the best commander pairing in kvk1 no I don't think so but there's a couple of key features that this pairing offers first of all it's completely free to play second of all they are both aoe commanders ethel flood has a half circle with a really nice debuff here and sun Tzu has a fan shape but he still hits five targets for about a thousand damage factor to each target and he also has a rage engine here as well plus he gives you more skill damage which is going to make your ethel flood hit a little bit harder and gives you some infantry health which you really need and 10 percent damage taken reduction plus he has access to some really good talent trees here he has the infantry tree and the skill tree and if you're going to be using sun Tzu with ethel flood this is the build that i would be recommending to you I would grab feral nature and then for the infantry tree I would grab all the health over here I would grab all of the March speed over here and I would put one point into snare of thorns this is especially true if your ethel fled is expertise because she deals 20 percent more damage to slowed troops so you're gonna get a free instant slowdown occasionally with just unlocking this talent with one point in it you don't need all four points in it just one point is gonna get you that 20 percent extra damage which is very very nice you of course have a rage engine on undying fury as well and you're gonna be dealing more damage to cavalry units and that's the other thing in kvk1 you're going to be seeing a lot of players the low medium and high spenders they're going to be using a minamoto and it's either going to be paired with 
Cao Cao, especially because Minamoto at 5511 is very cheap. It's about 27 or 30 US dollars, if I remember correctly. And you know, the whales are going to have a Cao Cao behind him, or they're going to be using either Belisarius or probably by bars. Honestly, Minamoto by bars is a great pairing by bars. Even at 5511 is really going to help you out in the open field because he has a 1000 damage factor of five targets and 20% cav attack on top of the cav attack and March speed that you get from Minamoto and a single target hit is nice. Plus the debuff on the fourth skill. So if you're watching this as a low spender or above then for kvk1 i would recommend minamoto with by bars or with belisarius belisarius doesn't hit as hard but he's a little bit tankier right and there's some debuffing here so it really just depends on what you're going for but since there are going to be so many calves in the open field for kvk1 having a strong infantry commander pairing that can sort of counter the calves is going to be really nice it's a little bit tankier you take less damage you deal nine percent more damage to calves right so overall i think this is the best free to play army that you should be using in kvk1 especially because you won't have all your tier 5 unlocked and because of that you shouldn't really be like field fighting a ton in kvk1 you should really be saving all your resources and speed ups to progressing to the end game and really the effectiveness of this army is going to depend on how far along you've progressed your ethel fled but even without her expertise if you just max her first two skills she'll still be pretty good in the open field in kvk1 next up is kvk2 and that's when you start to get access to commanders such as Genghis Khan you get access to to Saladin, Alexander the Great, Constantine, Tamiris, and Edward of Woodstock. And of all of these commanders, there's really only one left that is still worth talking about, okay? Genghis Khan has never been worth talking about. Saladin, unfortunately, some players still use him and he does okay but even as a budget build i can't really recommend him anymore constantine is a great commander for sunset canyon or if you are a mega whale you can max him for garrisons but free to play players shouldn't really be spending their sculptures on constantine in the early game poison on tamiris is no longer a unique gimmick you can get poison from herman prime in the late game and edward is never a contender and so that leaves us with alexander the great he is currently the only season two kvk commander that is ever really seen in open field pvp in the end game and if you asked me about a year ago if you should invest in alexander the great i would have said absolutely not because he did not really age that well however today there exists a great pairing for him in the form of liu che so the question becomes do you now invest in alexander the great in kvk2 well like i said earlier in the video the answer is don't invest in anybody until season three of kvk but if you want to invest in somebody in kvk2 alexander the great is your only option but then the question becomes how many skills for him should you max out or should you actually expertise alexander the great in 2024 and the answer to that question really depends on how many sculptures you're getting your hands on and just to be transparent i think the only people that should be expertising alexander the great are probably players who are either all in on infantry and they don't care and they really want to fight in kvk2 and have access to him in kvk3 or the really heavy spenders right realistically if you look at the expertise there's only one thing that changes from his non-expertise state to his expertise state and that is that his active skill has a three target 30 percent damage taken debuff for four seconds on the enemy and this is a very powerful debuff like this is going to sort of enable the rest of your armies to perform really well in the open field in the late game but that's really expensive to be investing in alexander the great for a commander that only has one good pairing right if you don't pair him with liu che then just don't use alexander the great that's literally just the state of alexander the great right now and a year from now who knows he might fall off once again so is it worth expertise in alexander the great as a free to player low spender probably not so then the question becomes do you bring him to five five one one or you do you bring him to five 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 one and i would say honestly i know this might be a little bit unpopular but i think five 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 one is probably the play and here's why the third skill gives you 30 percent march speed okay now what you could consider is a partial maxing of this skill where you do like five five three one something like that and i think that that would be a pretty cheap investment and the reason for that is because infantry are the slowest well besides siege they're the slowest troop type and in the end game when you're going to be really using alexander the great the march speed really helps him out a ton especially i mean the infantry attack is nice as well so i personally think bringing this skill beyond just the single unlock is worth it 
whether you bring him to five five three one which will give you 20 percent march speed 20 percent attack or you bring him to five 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 one which gives you 30 30 and that's that's probably what i would recommend but just depends on how many sculptures you have right but really you have you have to max the first skill right and you have to max the second skill because the instant proc damage here is where a lot of the damage comes from for alexander the great and the fourth skill you know it's nice to have but i mean you're still gonna get 20 percent attack and 10 percent defense just by unlocking this skill the defense is when you have a shield so you're still getting some value by unlocking that so my official position here is going to be that if you're looking for something to invest in in kvk2 to use for kvk2 and kvk3 alexander the great is your only choice a decent stopping point would be 5531 ideally you would do 5551 and then of course if you're a medium or high spender then you can max him out and this is going to help you a ton in your mid game performance and you're still going to have use for him in the end game season of conquest at least for now at the time of recording this video from there you're going to move into kvk3 and this is where the floodgates are opened you'll have access to so many of these commanders and most of them are trash most of them are not things that you really have to worry about at all for example all the kvk one and two commanders right out of the gate you can kind of ignore from here on out and i honestly think at the time of recording this video there is a clear first commander that you should be getting your hands on when you enter into kvk3 and season of conquest and that is of course Uche. we just talked about him before and the reason for this is because i personally think he is contender for the best commander in the game at the time of recording this video the only other commander that might even come close is Zhuge Liang okay which we'll talk about in just a second but because you'll probably already have the Alexander the Great from KBK2 you're gonna have a slam dunk insane pairing that you can instantly use with the commander that you already have this screenshot is from my current KBK you could see the date right here and this is just one of many battle reports that I've gotten from my Liu Che with Alexander the Great and it's literally a five to one trade it's actually insane some of my reports were even better than this I would say the worst trades from him were like like two or three to one now keep in mind I have a fully expertise to Alexander the Great and I have all legendary gear so your mileage is going to vary it might not be this good and of course you know six to twelve months from now there might be new commanders that come out that kind of counter this infantry March right so their effectiveness might go down over time but considering we're talking about a kvk2 commander I think this is such a good pairing that it really helps players merge from the mid game into the late game and I think that that is amazing and also right around season three of kvk you're going to get access to a building called the museum and alexander the great has a relic in the museum that gives him 10 percent more defense and you take three percent less normal damage so it's a little bit of a buff for alexander the great going into the late game and this makes your liu che a little bit more tanky so then the question becomes do you expertise liu che or not and i personally think that liu che is a commander that you must expertise and the reason for this is because his expertise is so so it's it's deceptively good people look at this and they don't really think that it's that good it's insane you have a 25 percent chance to launch an extra basic attack there's no cooldown on this which means one in four turns your basic attacks are going to deal double the damage okay and the extra basic attack can trigger extra talents such as undying fury it can also trigger things like your accessories such as the concealed dagger or the horn of fury it even gives you another opportunity to trigger the instant proc 1700 damage on alexander the great's second skill which is one of the reasons why this commander pairing is so good but beyond all of that one thing that another youtuber wout gaming discovered and we've covered it on this channel here is that this extra basic attack also gives you rage for a basic attack which is like 86 rage or something like that which is basically a better version of the horn of fury which is one of the best accessories in the game and his expertise is literally better than that so this expertise alone is just unbelievably powerful and everything that you're unlocking on the way there is really good as well you're getting infantry defense infantry march speed skill damage taken reduction infantry attack instant proc damage more normal damage and on top of all of that his active skill is like the strongest aoe in the game 2250 to five targets and a fan with a massive march speed reduction easily a contender for best commander in the game so i think he's a commander that you should definitely expertise from here you have a couple of different options you've already got a really solid infantry march and there's a good chance that you probably don't have enough equipment to have a second good infantry march you probably have a lot of blueprints for cavalry and for archers and so at this point in the video you get to decide based on the current meta whenever you're watching this if it's three months from now six months from now nine months from now 
the meta could evolve and that's why i said earlier you should subscribe with the notifications turned on so you don't miss those big commander releases but right now since we're probably going to see a new cavalry set of commanders come out in the next month or so i'd probably wait until we see what those commanders are we as a community are expecting at least one of those commanders to be part of the new open field meta and historically cavalry have been the best open field meta commanders in the entire game and right now they are due for a new set of commanders that could really push the meta in a whole different direction and so depending on how good those cavalry commanders are will depend on which direction you go i have a gut feeling that you'll probably want to go with cavalry but since those commanders aren't out yet we're going to talk first about archers okay now there's two archer commanders that are part of the open field meta right now earlier we talked about Zhuge Liang which was a contender for best commander in the game in my opinion and we also have the new kid on the block which is Herman Prime now the thing about Herman Prime is he does have a really powerful half circle AoE but the benefit of Herman Prime is that his AoE also inflicts the poison debuff on all three targets that he's hitting every stack of poison that the target has they'll take three percent more skill damage and this can stack up to 15 times which is 45 percent more skill damage taken which is actually insane he also gives you 15 percent march speed for Zhuge Liang who desperately needs the march speed and he gives you a nice well-rounded amount of stats here plus a bonus to skill damage aoe skill damage right he also has an instant defense reduction which is really really nice a nice debuff there so between Herman Prime and Zhuge Liang who should you invest in first well if you have been saving up a ton of sculptures and you want to go the archer route and you don't have Yi song Ye, then i would do probably a 5511 Zhuge Liang and your herman prime you could probably stop him at 5551 from there you then want to expertise Zhuge Liang. i think his expertise is quite good it means you start with the 10 percent all damage and that also means that your first active skill proc is also going to deal 1500 direct damage factor which if you know anything about how you fight in the open field having your first skill proc that extra damage is going to be really really important now if you have the isong ye from earlier which again most of you probably shouldn't then really you have two choices first of all you could run the herman prime with isong ye 5551 herman prime slap isong ye behind him and boom there you go the benefit of this army is that herman prime still hits pretty hard and his debuff is insane plus he has that march speed that you desperately need for isong ye the downside of this is that Zhuge Liang is just a stronger commander than Herman Prime. So if you're okay with Zhuge Liang being really slow in the open field, and I mean, literally probably your slowest army, then you could do Zhuge Liang with YSG. That might not sound like a big deal. Like, oh, it's just slow, whatever. I'll just be patient. Well, the problem is that if you don't stick to the target, like if they just run away, then you're not dealing damage. You're not going to gain rage. You're not going to pop your active skills, right? So March speed matters a lot in open field fighting. So being super slow is a problem. So you can go either route here. I'd probably lean more towards going for Herman prime first. If you have Isong Ye, just because that March speed is so important to me, that's just my opinion. But ultimately you'll want to eventually replace your YSG pretty quickly. Anyway, a five, five, one, one Zhuge Liang, in my opinion, is better than a fully expert East Isong Ye, even with his museum relic so just keep that in mind it won't be too long before you have a better commander than YSG anyway which is why if you'd start with the Herman Prime it's not going to be the end of the world you're going to be using him and no matter who you pair with regardless once you've made these investments then you can start to look at a cavalry army and the reason for this again is because as you're playing the game you're going to be collecting blueprints that is equipment blueprints for all of the different troop types and so you might as well use those blueprints to put more troops on the field plus you're going to be training all three troop types anyway and so in my opinion i think it's a priority to get at least one of each troop type into the open field right so next you would do cavalry and as i mentioned before there's a good chance that when you watch this video if you're watching it a month or two from now there's probably a new set of cavalry commanders out that one of which is probably the new meta okay that's my guess i could be completely wrong they could shock us with some garbage i doubt they'll do that but that is definitely something they could do however if you're watching today and you have fighting tomorrow and you put a gun to my head and said okay omni who should i invest in for cavalry commanders well there are two contenders here we have nevsky and we have huo typically both of these commanders are primary commanders although i know a lot of players will do a huo primary with nevsky secondary and they swear that that combo works extremely well which i don't doubt that at all there's just no aoe on this commander pairing which is why i don't love it you're not getting that passive bonus damage over time so if you're gonna split them up what i'm gonna do here is just move richard down okay and what we'll do is split these up and one of the questions that i get 
a ton from players is who is better Nevsky or Huo, right? And it sounds like a very simple question, but guys, the truth is for me, from my experience, the battle reports are very similar. I usually put my better gear and armaments on my Nevsky, and I usually put Joan of Arc behind my Nevsky, and it typically outperforms my Huo that I still run with William, and it typically outperforms them slightly. And that's probably because Joan's a better commander than William, and the armaments and equipment on my Nevsky are slightly better. All right. When I flip these around, suddenly my Huo with better gear and better armaments and Joan of Arc is performing better. Right. And so at the end of the day, I really think both of these commanders are very similar. However, which of them is going to be outclassed or outdated first? Right. And I'm just going to put William away because I, I mean, I don't know if, how much William will continue to be relevant, but if I were to guess, Okay, just a wild guess. I would say Nevsky will probably be obsolete before Huo. That's just my guess. Okay. And the reason that I'm saying that is strictly because Huo gives you a ton of stats. Like his he has 35% defense, like 40% attack. Plus, he has a lower rage cost for the first few seconds of battle. He gets the autumn wind effect, and his damage factor is just higher. Okay. It's 400 damage factor higher than Nevsky. And so even though he does not have a debuff, he does have a nice skill damage bonus as well. Just like Nevsky does. Nevsky's is higher for the secondary, of course. But regardless, if we see a cavalry commander come into the game that hits harder than Nevsky and has a solid debuff or is AOE and has a solid debuff, we're probably going to keep using the higher damage factor commander and bench the Nevsky first. Okay. Now, again, I'm not saying Huo is better than Nevsky. I just told you guys that to me, they perform identical. No matter which configuration I run, they perform almost exactly the same. It's negligible. But if I were to guess, I would say Huo would last longer. So with that being said, and I could be completely wrong here, just to be completely frank with you guys, I could be wrong here, but the best pairing for either Nevsky or Huo is going to be Joan of Arc Prime. Now I've actually even seen players suggest that you should get Huo and Nevsky and skip Joan of Arc Prime. And I think those players are probably not understanding where the value of Joan comes from, right? Because a lot of players say, okay, yeah, she has a 2000 damage factor AOE, small buff here, and basically no stats, 20% attack, 10% health. Like that's not that much. Everything else here is kind of not, I mean, the third skill on her is basically useless, right? The value in Joan is all in the fourth skill. This is the entire value here. This is not a 2000 damage factor AOE. Every other skill cycle, it's basically a 4000 damage factor AOE. Okay. So I think a lot of players, you know, they look at the kit at face value and they're like, oh, there's not that much here, but like multiply this by two. And all of a sudden, like the damage is through the roof, no matter who you pair her with. So in a perfect world, I would say a 5 1 1 1 Joan of Arc will do the trick. I think most players are probably not going to get that, right? The probability that you get a 5 1 1 5 is like lower than 2%, I think. I think it's like a 1.2% chance that you get a 5115 very low probability okay you can dramatically increase the chances of getting this fourth skill to five by doing a 5515 it costs more sculptures but you have about a six percent chance of getting that i think or six and a half percent i recently did a video that i broke down the different ways that you can get 5155 or 5515 and things like that a lot of you might have missed it so go ahead and check that out on the channel if you're curious about that i didn't cover Joan of Arc in that video but i'm telling you right now it's about 1.2 percent chance so i'm going to assume that if you're watching you're probably going to get a 5515 i mean just based on probabilities that's most likely going to be what you're going to have to do to get this four skill to five and you need this fourth skill to five basically to use Joan of Arc in my opinion and of course the first skill has to be five as well now we also have to consider what the skill level might be of Nevsky and Huo right do you have to max these two commanders well you don't have to I think all the skills are good on Nevsky it's hard to say which one to skip probably the third one because it's just giving you generic defense and a little bit of damage when surrounded fourth skill gives you a ton of skill damage you really want that and you really want the health and march speed on the second skill you need the first skill the expertise is good as well because it gives you a ton of health for three seconds same thing with Huo like five 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 one I mean you're missing out on a lot of skill damage if you do that so yeah either way both these commanders like eventually you'll probably want to expertise them if you want to get the most value out of that march but Joan is definitely that is not in the same boat as that you do not need to expertise Joan of Arc Prime 5515 would be the max that I would do so whether you go for Huo or for Nevsky either way you're going to end up with something like this you'll have one infantry one archer one cavalry march and then from here there's a couple things that you can do first of all I think the best pairing for Liu Che in the open field is 
probably CPO prime. And honestly, the Alex does perform shockingly well. So whether you get CPO at this point or not, like if you don't even have CPO at the time of watching this video, but you do have Alex, then like you might, you might just hold off on CPO prime and just rock this until the next infantry release. Right. But if you have a lot of sculptures and you want to improve your Liu Che army, then you might consider doing CPO prime ever since Liu Che came out, people have been starting to doubt CPO prime for some reason. That's absurd. I still run Guan CPO and get five to one trades with him. So that's like such an old army and I'm still trading well. And it's because CPO is just such an insane commander. So I don't see CPO going anywhere anytime soon, unless the next infantry release is another Liu Che that's all in on smite damage. And then skill damage just becomes kind of irrelevant for infantry. But either way, if you're looking for like the best in slot, then you could go for CPO and you could either expertise him or you could do five, 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 one. Like if we're being honest, the final skill only has a 50% chance of occurring anyway and just unlocking it still gives you a 10 skill damage taken reduction and half the value of the shield whereas the second and third skill give you a ton of stats you get the attack you get the march speed and you get the health and you get an instant proc damage over time i think 5551 is a decent place to stop for cpo if you want a value build especially because if you're going to pair him with liu che this top part of bonus skill damage isn't that great and if you're not pairing him with guan then you're relying on other people to be still using guan which i think as time goes on you're going to see more Guan Yu as the year progresses, right? I still use him. Plenty of people still use Guan, but I mean, you know, who knows how long Guan will stay relevant in the meta. And so if there's less Guans out there and you're not pairing him with a skill damage commander, and you don't really need the expertise and so you could do a 5551 and that would be a nice budget build for cpo and then at that point you could basically retire your alexander the great and you would have something like this you would run cpo prime as the primary and if you get to this point then your fourth army right you could you know you'll have you'll be pretty teed up to do a second infantry army right? You could do something like this. And then, you know, whatever the next infantry release is, you could do that. Or you could slap a Gorgo here, right? And you'll be chilling. That's something that you can consider as well. Gorgo is a little bit slower on the slower side. So, you know, keep that in mind, but yeah, you'd be primed to move more in on infantry. Or if you do just want to rock the one infantry army and then start to branch off into another cavalry army, you could do something like that. And then again, you know, we have this blank slot here for whoever the next commander is going to be. Uh, I think that's going to be, that's probably going to be the, the play. Anyway, guys, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, I hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm. So other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video with breaking news about new commanders to keep you on track with the best investment strategies. Comment down below, of course, any questions that you have or any other suggestions, things that I might have missed throughout this video. And of course, I'm going to thank the sponsor of today's video. Once again, the Amazon app store make sure you go ahead and click my link in the description below give it a try it's absolutely free and without sponsors like them i wouldn't be able to make the content that i do here on youtube so it really helps out the channel a ton and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace